I've been monitoring the performance of six horse racing tipping services since the start of 2021. In previous videos, I've been providing updates on the services individually, but going forward, I'll be covering the results for all the services in one go at the end of the month. So let's dive in and see how each of the services have been getting on. This is a spreadsheet I use to record the results of all the tipsters I'm monitoring. If you've watched any of my previous performance update videos, the columns will be familiar to you. They're probably self-explanatory, but if they don't make sense, you may want to watch one or two of those videos first where I explain the columns. First off, I'll look at 2020 Racing's high straight rate service. The last update I provided on the results was the 8th of April. At the time, they were yet to have a winner for the month, and profits were down 14 points. In my update I said I thought they would do some winners and initially the results picked up well. They bounced back up to 37.5 points for the year based upon obtaining the evening prices. And it was a particularly good day on the 22nd of April where both their selections won. With Mr Melder drifting from 2-1 to one out to 7-1 to one at SP. And settling at the bigger price thanks to Bet365 offering the best odds guaranteed prices the evening before racing. After that, the winners dried up again during the final week of April and they dropped back down to 26 points for the year, which was a loss of nearly 15 points for the month. The first half of May saw a splattering of winners, with them about breaking even, but just one winner during the second half of the month meant May finished with a loss of 11 points, reducing their overall profit for the year to 15 points based upon the evening prices and 8.8 .8 points taking the early morning best odds guaranteed prices. So we look and see how that looks on a chart. The lines where they stood at the time I did the last update on their figures. And initially they did really well, but it's been a downhill slope ever since then. So here's a breakdown of the month by month figures. And you can see that consistently the evening prices outperform the best odds guarantee prices, which in turn outperform the Betfair SPs and starting prices. Next up we have the Northern Monkey Punter. As I've explained in the past, the selections are more complex with combinations of win and place percentages, multiples and non-horse racing tips, which don't lend themselves well to my spreadsheet. Wayne, who runs the service, sends out his own detailed profit and loss spreadsheet at the end of each month, which you can see here. He shows performance based upon best odds and what he terms worst odds. They're really second best odds, but they're what he feels are the worst prices members should be able to achieve following the selections. He breaks things down into singles and multiples and also separates the non-horse racing tips. The horse racing singles did well in the first week of May, accumulating 12.72 points based upon the high odds and 10.91 points on low odds in the first seven days. Things were up and down throughout the remainder of the month, finishing on 11.46 points for the high odds and 7.73 on the lower. Away from horse racing, things didn't fare so well. He advised a number of bets on the Eurovision Song Contest, which I found rather strange for a horse racing tipping service, but apparently it's an event he's done well at in previous years. Members who have no interest in Eurovision betting could simply ignore these tips and they would have banked additional profits in doing so as the Eurovision singles accounted for losses of 4.25 points and over 6 points in the multiples. I've pulled out the profit and loss figures into a separate spreadsheet so you can view them more clearly. So overall the singles on the high odds achieved 7.21 points profit but the multiples achieved a loss of 6.7 points giving a slight half point profit overall. Based on the low odds, there was 3.48 points profit for the singles and a loss of 7.38 points on the multiples, giving an overall loss of 3.9 points. Adding those to the year to date gives 18.74 points on the high odds and a loss of 4.1 points on the low odds. And as I mentioned, anyone ignoring the Eurovision bets would have increased their profits. Next we have the Speculate to Accumulate Place Spotter service. My previous update for them was at the end of April. And they had a couple of good price winners during the first week of May that put the service firmly in profit for the month. PlaySpotter then took a break for the majority of May and there weren't any more selections until the 31st of the month. Highway Grey was advised at morning odds of 9 to 1 and finished 4th at double those odds at 18 to 1. In the following day's email they said they didn't think there would be many members who hadn't got paid out at the 18 to 1. I've recorded the profit based on 9 to 1 as their advice was to take the enhanced places with either Skybet or William Hill. Now Skybet don't pay best odds guarantee on their enhanced place races and William Hill don't offer best odds guarantee prices until 10am and the email was sent out at 9.30 so placing the bet with either of those two bookmakers you've only got paid out at 9 to 1. 
Considering their lack of bets, they've returned a good profit throughout the month. If we have a quick look at that on the chart, they built well on the profits they'd achieved throughout March and April. And after what was a tricky start to the year, they're now well into profits. As I mentioned in previous updates, their service lends itself much better to using the best odds guaranteed from the bookmakers rather than taking the Betfair SPs, and that's due to the enhanced places that the bookmakers offer. The best performing service for the month was Cheek Pieces. My last update on their service was on the 11th of May. They had a winner the following day and then popped in with a 50 to 1 winner in the shape of Company Minx. Prior to the email going out, only Bet365 had priced up the race and they were offering odds of 25 to 1. But when I checked the odds, a few bookmakers were offering 33 to 1, so that's the price I recorded the bet at. With the SP drifting to 50 to 1, the recorded profit for evening prices would have been 10 points higher if I'd used the Bet365 price, as they offer best odds guarantee on their evening prices, whereas most other bookmakers don't provide bog prices until the following morning. That's definitely something to bear in mind when you're taking a price the evening before racing. Company Minx's win was the start of a good few days of results that saw overall profits for the year jump to just shy of 50 points. Some of that profit was given back towards the end of the month, but overall May was an excellent month for the service. So the line shows the position they were at at the time I did the last update. And then you can see the huge jump when they hit the 50 to 1 winner, which was bigger at starting price and best odds guarantee than it was taking the evening price before. Overall they achieved a profit of 25 points based on the evening prices, and that was boosted to 31 points based on the early morning best odds guaranteed prices. So overall for the year to date, they've had 45 points profit based on evening prices and 37 points based on best odds guarantee. Bet Alchemist is another service that I last reported on only three weeks ago. They did really well in the week that followed my update, with wins for Copper Knight advised at 7-1, backed into 11-2, Bay Bridge advised at 3-1, winning at 11-4, and Pepperoni Pete advised at 10-1, but paying out at the best odds guarantee price of 12-1. That took their overall profit for the year up to over 23 points, but alas, winners deserted them over the last half of May, and overall the profits dropped back down to 9.3 points. And looking at the chart, we can see the effect of those three winners just after my last update, and then the losing run that they're currently on. Overall, May finished with a loss of 5.25 points. And as I mentioned, their overall profit for the year is just over 9 points, based on the best odds guaranteed prices. The final one to look at is Tic Tac Tips. And my last update on their service was only mid-May, so there's not been a great deal of betting activity since that update. With just the one winner and five places from the 11 bets. The winner, First Connection, was available to back at a nice price of 9-2 to two, both the evening before and on the morning of the race and was well backed into a 3-1 to one SP. Looking at the chart for the overall year to date, after the bright start to the year there was the disappointing March and then things have been up and down for the last couple of months. As we go into the summer months it'll be interesting to see if results pick up. I'll leave links in the description below to the Racing Index pages for each of the tipsters, so you can check those out if you want more information about any of the services. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon to receive notifications when I upload future videos.